Hi, this is Mark Gallucci with Digital Control Incorporated, here to present a short video that details the settings menu option of the Digitrack F5 receiver. We're currently viewing the main menu. To access the settings menu option, I'm going to thumb it down. I'm going to thumb it to the right. There are my settings. Click the trigger. Now we're viewing all the items that we have the ability to change the settings with. Notice the downward pointing arrow. That lets us know that further menu options are available and you would access those via the thumb switch, thumb it down. Okay, first up, it's already highlighted. Depth mode, I'll click that trigger. So we can get depth information in inches only, feet and inches, decimal feet. Now decimal feet is pretty much reserved for the guys putting in sewer where their requirements are, you need to be at 6.5 feet versus six feet, six inches. Lastly, of course, we have the metric option. One thing to remember, however you have this set, say I have this set at inches only, when I load my HAG setting, now the HAG stands for height above ground and that is detailed in another video. But when I load that, if I have this set to inches, I'm going to have to load my HAG setting in inches only. If I have my, my depth units set to feet and inches, I will load my HAG setting with feet and inches. Same thing for metric. Okay. Click the trigger to get out. Next up, pitch. How would you like your pitch units? I'll click that trigger. We have two options, percent grade and degrees. Well, I don't know anybody still using degrees. Percent grade is the language of the surveyor. So you'd highlight that and you'd click it. We have a time stamp and a date stamp. So you want to you want to make sure and have that correctly if you're running data log or log while drilling software. Every rod you put in the ground will have a time stamp. Every job will have a date stamp. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and we'll show you how to do that. First thing we want to note, are you going to set the clock or are you going to set the date? If I want to set the clock, I make sure that clock is highlighted as it is now. I'll click the trigger. And we use a thumb, thumb switch and get it over here. This is a 24 hour clock. It's military time. So I want to be at 1135. Click it once. Back to the one. Click it again. Over to the three. 11:35. Now if I like that, I would get over here and I'd highlight this enter button. Say I made a mistake and I had to get back out and do it again, I'd slide up to the X icon and I'd click the trigger. Okay, now it still says 11 o'clock but I need to change the minutes. 11:30. let's say 36. So 11:36. do you like that? Yes. Thumb over, highlight the enter button, click the trigger. We just set the time. Let's get back up there and set the date. Click it. Once again, you make sure your calendar page is highlighted. Click it. Get over to the keypad. Now I want to show you something. This is month, day, year. So I'll go ahead and set that. We'll set that for month, zero, seven. It's July, day, the 19th, and the year, 2012. One, two. So, month, day, year. That is the only date format available with this thing. That's the US date format. Sorry, metric users. Sorry, rest of the world, but that's all you're going to get. Month, day, year. If you like that, get to the enter button. Right there. Click it. So we've now just set both the time and date stamp. Next up telemetry. I'll click that. As a quick reminder, when we use the term telemetry, we are referring to the ability of the handheld receiver to send information back to the remote display mounted on the drill. We give you channels one, as highlighted, two, three, four, and channel zero. So if I was to set that on channel zero and click it, I will have turned off the telemetry. The handheld unit will no longer send information back to the remote display. As a byproduct of channel zero, you're going to save a good deal of battery life. And that would be the battery that powers up your handheld unit. That's the battery that's indicated right here. So channel zero saves battery life. So why do we give you channels one, two, three, and four? 
couple of reasons. One, it's highly likely that you're going to be in an environment where you have multiple drills operating in the same general area. And you certainly do not want to pick up a neighboring locator's information. And he doesn't want to pick up yours either. So in those situations, just make sure that you're on one telemetry channel and the drill next to you is on a separate telemetry channel. Also, we give you four distinct channels, four distinct frequencies, because you might be in an interference environment. Telemetry operates on the megahertz scale. If you are in a problem where you're getting messy data, mixed up data because of an interference, switch to another frequency, switch to another channel. Chances are you're going to get right through that. That interference will no longer be a problem. So that's it. Which channel do you want to be on? Next up, roll offset. So before I show you, explain that, I'll give you a brief e a reason why we have that in there, an example. Roll offset is used by contractors who operate transmitters, housings, I should say, transmitter housings that are threaded on both ends. The front end of the housing is where you would torque up your bit. So the old way people would do it, they'd grab their bit, they'd torque it up, they'd put their transmitter in the housing and they'd see how close they were from the clock of the transmitter to the 12 o'clock position of the bit. Rarely would they get it exactly right. So they would untorque their bit, they would change their shim stack, they would retorque their bit, and once again they see the clock position of the transmitter versus the clock position of, that, of the bit. So they could go back and forth many times trying to get these things to match up. Well, we don't have to do that anymore. You grab your housing, you torque your bit on there all the way, you put your transmitter in the housing, and you roll your bit over to exactly 12 o'clock. Now you would enact roll offset. Highlight that, click the trigger. What you have just done by enacting roll offset, you have just told that transmitter that it's at 12 o'clock. Regardless of where it was before, it now is going to read 12 o'clock. So before you hit that button, it's absolutely imperative that you make sure your bit is exactly at the 12 o'clock position. Enact it, boom. Now the transmitter within that housing says 12 o'clock, which matches your bit face. So that's what roll offset is. I can enact it, enable it, or I can turn it off. Just that easy. Okay, next up, pressure units. I get two options here. Before we tell you about those options, why do you need pressure units? Well, that's going to be used exclusively by the contractors who are operating a fluid pressure transmitter, an FPT. Fluid pressure transmitters provide you your annular mud pressure, your annular fluid pressure on a pilot bore. Also, if you're running a tense attract device on the back ring, a tense attract device not only monitors your annular fluid pressure, but it will also tell you your force being applied to your product pipe. So the tense attract device hooks up just aft of the reamer and before your product pipe and is used on a back ring. So once again, do I want fluid pressure monitored in PSI or kilopascals? Next up, temperature, very simple. Do you want the temperature of your transmitter displayed in Fahrenheit or Celsius centigrade? Next up, well there's the icon for the tense attract device, click that trigger. Do you want the force being applied to your product pipe shown in pounds or newtons? Right? Pounds, newtons, very easy. And that's it. That's it for your settings. Nice thing about the settings, most of these settings, you'll set it once and you'll be done. You'll never have to get back in there again. Obviously, you're probably going to have to get back in and change your telemetry channel occasionally. If you use the roll offset, that'll need to be changed as well. But that's it. For the most part, everything else is just done. Set it once and you're finished. Let's get back to the main menu. Let me go back to the main menu.